take the second presenter, Dr. Samti Ivande. Over to you, Sam. You need to unmute yourself. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I'll just have to screen up um, just a second. Okay. okay, is it up now? Okay. Yeah, so um, it, see um, you all, some of you have seen um, a couple of times in the um, <laughs> um, Thank you, uh, Talato, for the um, wonderful talk. Just giving um, a nice uh, background to the next step I'm going to be talking about. So I this uh, talk, The Continuing Evolution of Citizen Science in West Africa. And essentially, I'll be talking about the people side of things, the experiences that um, people have shared with us by participating in the Third Atlas. Um, you already heard how things were when we started in, at the end of 2015. So, um, Les already mentioned that there were lots of people who were not very sure that our classing was going to take off in Nigeria. And of course, when you consider that we small team of three people, and uh, a lot of people thought we were crazy when we started this. But um, very quickly, um, we had to get to work and see um, what we could do, you know, to get more and more people interested in the Atlas project. And one of the first things that we decided to do was to do a map, but not a map of birds, rather a map of people. So we're going to rely on um, colleagues, mainly um, Aplori graduates. And um, it's interesting that the bird atlas started rather with an atlas of uh, people, so an atlas of uh, birders and the, um, the main um, stakeholders that we're trying to get on boards with this idea that a lot of people didn't initially think was going to um, was going to work, and so um, the key strategy at the time was let's try and get as many people on board with this idea. People who already have the experience with bird watching, get them to uh, begin to participate. And um, as part of this strategy, there was the idea that we can um, begin to form bird clubs around these people who already had experience. So the experienced builders are trained on ontologists, mostly alumni from a plurry. Um, we're going to more or less form the framework or the backbone upon which this entire project. So a citizen science project in an environment where citizen science was more or less um, entirely new. Um, and the idea for the bird club, the idea for the bird club was, okay, we'll get people with the skills and then we'll get people with the interests and bring them together. And so um, in bringing them together within that um, platform or that context of a bird club, we could then get people to interact, there will be skills transfer, and then of course the idea is about um, biodiversity conservation and you know, getting people interested with nature was going to then begin to um, spread out. And, you know, one other aspect was um, we were really thinking about um, a citizen science project involving people who were only beginning to learn the skills. So um, we thought also that using this sort of um, strategy or the bird clubs was a way also that we, we could have some sort of quality control for the data that was coming into the database. And so we set off with uh, starting these bird clubs. And so again, matching this uh, initial distribution of people with the skills, we were then able to build bird clubs around most of these um, skilled pers uh, um, um, persons. And the idea was if we could get a good spread of bird clubs around the country, then we could kind of get, get sustained momentum of birders who were um, contributing to the Atlas project, collecting or uh, recording their, their, their um, side things and then making a contribution to the Atlas project. That was the idea for the bird clubs. And very quickly, we were able to get um, this bird club up and running. Now we have somewhere uh, close to 30 bird clubs in, in Nigeria. But then the amazing thing about the bird clubs um, is best highlight of the really, really interesting groups. So the bird club in Ibadan, in the Southwest, um, from members of the bird club, um, we started to get a group that came together 
and made dedicated atlas in one of the core activities you know of of these clubs and so we always talk about the southwest atlas team because um what this group did is really really amazing and it kind of um, was the spark that led to all of the amazing successes that you know we all talk about now with citizen science um, in Nigeria. So the Southwest Atlas team was formed in 2016, and you can see in the maps below, you know how much um, impact this group has made. So these were mainly people from various bird clubs in the Southwest region coming together to do dedicated atlasing. So it's usually once a month. And we currently have some of them uh, making plans to go out next week for another outing. So um, this this is people motivating each other, coming together to work um, as a team. And we can see what, uh, as is often said, you know, you can see the great things that can be achieved when people work together. So this is about the people. And the Southwest um, Atlas team part is actually the spark that, um, you know, um, took off for us in Nigeria. And after this model, so the Southwest Atlas team kind of were like the leading lights for us in terms of getting people to motivate one another, work together. And the ideas that came um, with that group were then uh, we tried to use those ideas to replicate, you know, similar progress in the North. And that's how we ended up with another in the North called Arewa Atlas team. Again, you can see, you know, how remarkable the impact has been in terms of um, making a contribution to the Atlas project. So uh, increased coverage in the North and all because of this dedicated group, you know, of young Nigerians working together um, through the uh, bed, bed clubs and through the Atlas teams to do all of this really remarkable um, work that we're talking about today. Um, so we had the bed clubs and we thought that was a really great, um, um, great platform to get people, you know, engaged, get people involved. But then we also, that um, there were lots of people who were really interested in atlasing, but often always didn't feel confident to participate. So lots of people kept on telling us, oh, we would like to join this project, we would like to participate, we would like to spend time outdoors, we enjoy nature, but we would really like opportunities to get the skills to be able to contribute and participate in the Nigeria Bed Atlas project. And of course that got us um, thinking and um, in 2019, we were able to get together um, and get some funds from the National Geographic uh, Society. So this funding was put into field courses. So we had two field courses and brought together lots of this nature enthusiasts. So we had people with diverse backgrounds. Some of them were accountants, some were pharmacists, some of them architects, you know, people from diverse backgrounds, but who just had an interest in nature and were really, really keen to get the skills. And so through this field course, we had two of these fields, one in the south, and we got these people together. And after a month, you know, of intensive um, bird watching and training them on various aspects of the Bird Atlas Protocol, um, many of them have gone back and are now beginning to make, you know, a very valuable contributions to the Atlas project. But one key thing that came out of this, again, was another Atlas team um, that came up um, in the Southeast, South-South, and they call themselves CESAT. So again, um, when we're talking about all of these really interesting stories, the progress in the Southwest, the progress in the North, then the members of this, uh, or the participants at this course, most of them from, so those of the um, participants at the course from the Southeast and the South-South really thought that they, it was time for them to get together and you know, also start an Atlas team in the Southeast, South-South of Nigeria. So again, you will just see in the map below most of what we would refer to as their domain. And the uh, CISAT is uh, also making really, really um, remarkable progress, you know, increasing the coverage around this region. So you, all of this are, um, are really interesting developments that we see happening in a society or in a community that, um, Les said before, a lot of people thought, you know, citizen science was, wasn't really going to catch on and, um, you know, atlasing was not really going to work. But um, we are really, really amazed at all of this, um, this um, interest and the impact that 
um, a project like the Nigeria Bed Atlas project has really sparked off in Nigeria. And the key thing to actually talk about is, you know, the group and the community that this that has been formed around all of this. So um, if you go on the Nigeria Bed Atlas project, the page, the Facebook page, you will see that there is um, an engagement from about oh, close to 5,000 members of this, uh, of this Facebook group. So there are, of course, people at different levels of um, interest, different levels of engagement, but it's really remarkable to have, you know, a community beginning to build around the Bed Atlas project. And like Les often says, this is actually the amazing thing about the Nigerian Bed Atlas project. It is indeed the people that, has, um, the people that have um, all come together because of this project. So that's really um, remarkable, and I would say what I'm um, celebrating. So um, as you already heard, of course, all of this um, in West Africa started off in Nigeria, but very quickly um, we got uh, into Sierra Leone with colleagues. Like um, you heard Dr. Talatu saying uh, before, we had uh, graduates from Aplori who had you know, gone back to their various countries. And so um, a workshop in Sierra Leone kicked off the uh, Sierra Leonean, uh, Sierra Leone Bed Atlas project. In similar fashions, we had another workshop in Liberia and um, Clara is here doing a really um, amazing job beginning to get people together for the uh, Liberian Bird Atlas. And of course, um, a few days ago, we had the online virtual workshop, which um, kickstarted the Ghana uh, Bird Atlas uh, project as well. Mm -hmm. So this is all really, really amazing. And to see all of this community um, grow and you know, begin to form around the Bird Atlas uh, project. But it's amazing because it's not just about birds. Um, like I like to say and tell uh, most of the uh, members of the bird clubs and all of the groups and people that I interact with, I say birds are just a window to nature. And it is really what we are beginning to observe because you see people going out initially um, joining the bird clubs, but then people are beginning to get interested in other biodiversity as well. So. Um, one of them that is really catching on is butterflies, and um, I remember a few um, a few weeks ago during one of the BDI Citizen Hours, there was talk about um, the growing community of people who are also beginning to get involved with um, um, the virtual museum, um, also taking photos of butterflies and bringing them uh, and submitting that to the uh, virtual museum as well. So this again is just a, a photo from the um, photo albums on the um, Nigeria Bed Atlas uh, Facebook page. And you will see that um, there are lots of interest in other biodiversity as well. You know, people are beginning to take photos and bring, you know, upload them into the group and ask questions about all of this. And for me, that is really the amazing thing about all of what is going on with um, citizen science in West Africa. Um, and of course, this often leads to, you know, people with other interests uh, coming together as well. So um, most of you are um, now beginning to see the remarkable engagement that um, is now going on on the West African Wildlife and Nature Photography Group. I'm sure you will hear a lot more about that um, from Ringim when he, he comes up, you know, to talk about the engagement that comes on here. And you have people, you know, bringing photos from various taxa and asking lots of questions about the environment and for us i think that is the key thing you know getting that community working together and asking questions about nature and actually uh, putting in the work and acting to ensure that um, uh, biodiversity is conserved and nature is uh, remains on the on, on the agenda on people's minds so that is really um, the amazing thing that has been going on with citizen science in, in West Africa. And of course, is uh, we, we always have to have at the back of our minds at all times that all interests uh, you know, uh, uh, are welcomed when we talk about citizen science. So this may have started off um, about birds, but we can see how very quickly this has become about biodiversity in general. So this is one of the really amazing things that we should um, always, uh, we should um, always um, remember about what is going on with uh, citizen science in West Africa. But if I would summarize all of what is going on, and of course we now have new projects coming coming up in other countries, 
you know, and people that might be interested in the development of citizen science in their various countries. Some of the things I can say uh, from our experience in Nigeria is that it is really important to organize whatever existing community there is. So for us in Nigeria, it was, um, it was really good for us to have the um, alumni from a plori around which we um, started the Bird Atlas project and we can now see what is going on, you know, with all of the um, happenings that uh, are now, the developments that are growing out of the Bird Atlas project. And um, that Bird Club strategy was really valuable for people because um, it's helped people to build confidence um, to be able to participate. So initially when they started, a lot of people thought, oh, well, you had to be um, an ornithologist or you had to have had a degree in ornithology for you to participate. But through the bird clubs, lots of people um, began to get develop the skills that allowed them to confidently um, participate. And um, there was a lot of work to create awareness from the beginning. And I think it is something that I will always recommend for anybody who is interested in you know, starting um, a movement you know, of people for citizen science. And um, social media has been very valuable for us. Most of the coordination and the organization happens on WhatsApp and Facebook. So we can really see how valuable these platforms can be. And, you know, um, learning from our experience um, that a lot of people would like to participate. There's, the interest is there. And for some of these people, all they need is a bit of uh, an opportunity to get some more skills to participate. And that is all that it takes for some people. And so the opportunity to organize those field courses also um, was another eye-opener, letting us know that if we could continue to create opportunities for people, you know, to get the basic and fundamental required to participate, then there will be even increased um, engagement and, um, and participation. And of course, it's always um, very helpful when there is the funding to um, put all of this together. So all of this training and the awareness creation creation and atlas in itself um, can require resources and having access to funding is always very valuable so these are some of the lessons from um, how we have um, greatly um, enjoyed an increase in the citizen science community in Nigeria and now spreading into other parts of um, West Africa this is really um, amazing and um, if there is anything that we should celebrate, mostly, it is actually the community that is coming together all for biodiversity. Um, we, of course, through, from the Bird Atlas project, but we can see all of the um, diverse impacts that this is having as citizen science in West Africa continues to develop. Um, of course, this is all because of these citizen scientists, and we would like to acknowledge all of them, and I thank you all for listening. Thank you very much, uh, Sam, for this wonderful presentation. In fact, I feel very honored to see some of the remarkable you know, and outstanding uh, job that we have done in Nigeria. Thank you very much. And thanks the NIBAP team uh, for such a wonderful presentation. So any questions, comments from members? Sam, this is absolutely amazing. I've just been chatting uh, the Oscar while while this was on. Sorry, my wife's got the television on in the background. Hope it isn't distracting. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just made a comment that we can all learn. You know, uh, when I was president of LEPSOC, I wanted to do something like this, and I just couldn't <laughs> get it to take hold. Um, I think, you know, the, my colleagues down here were a little bit too. Uh, What's the word? Elitist. Is that the right way of saying it? And uh, you know what we need to do is desperately is get is get the community involved. And and if we can do something like this, you know, for, for butterflies and moths all over Africa. But you know, we in South Africa, we you know, we 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 are behind where you guys are with butterflies. We really are. Um, you know, to get this this level of enthusiasm. Um, across the whole country. I, I, mean, I can only take my hat off to you. It's a brilliant job. Well done. Mm. Okay. Yes. 
Yeah, all I can say is uh, I, I, I support Steve to the to mm. the hilt, and I, um, I, I I think you guys are are leaving us in the shade. I think mm. what you, what you're doing is a little short of uh, amazing. So well done to uh, Team Nigeria, and and hopefully becoming Team West Africa. West yeah. Africa, yes, uh, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. yeah. Can I just ask a, a question? Just, just a thought. So you, you mentioned the, um, you know, the the importance of WhatsApp and, and Facebook, um, and and these are being used as uh, you know, they're being used as products as, as services which are available as standard. You know, they're there. Um, I mean, my impression is that a lot of these tech giants um, are looking to Africa um, for you know the next phase of their development. They're talking about the next billion. Um, and I'm wondering, is it, is, it, is it possible to actually liaise with the tech giants and get their financial support and also their technical support um, for some of this? Um, so, I, I mean, I could imagine that they could be quite willing to, to pay for some of this work um, and also to use their platforms for things like the visualization of data. Um, you know, get, get these data visualized and, and out there so that they're being used for all sorts of things. Um, that's just a thought. That's a good suggestion, David. It really is. Mm. That's a great suggestion. Yeah. Mm. Sure. Mm. I mean, never mind the tech giant, uh, giants. One of the one of the people I roped in when I was trying to get a similar thing going in Websock <laughs> was good old Strilly Oppenheimer and um, and uh, the chief henchman uh, Duncan McPadgen. And uh, Duncan and I are still in touch. Um, and you know, Les, I think we need to rope him in on one of these. And Mark Anderson as well. Um, I know Duncan in particular, I think you'd be, be blown away by this. Um, so yeah, we can talk about that in our little, little, little group before we talk next week. Uh, but I think we need to think about how we're going to um, get a broader audience amongst the, the people who, who, um, who help support this, this kind of initiative. Uh, yeah, I could imagine that, that Google, for example, would be quite happy to um, you know, integrate distribution maps. Um, I, I can imagine that Bill Gates would be quite happy to stump up money for this kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. and, and then Facebook as well. Um, you know, there's all sorts of ways in which they, they could be quite happy to you know, promote engagement, share data, share visualization, um, you know, all, all sorts of things. So there's, there's huge resources and huge motivation from, from there, which, which could be tapped into. Um, I, I was thinking a little bit, um, we, we talked, um, a couple of meetings ago about the, you know, when we're collecting photographs, um, these can be photographs not just of the organism, but also of the habitat. Um, and again, involvement of, of Google with Google Maps. Um, you know, they're, they're setting out to sort of you know, map everything, map the landscape. Um, and they might be quite happy to create these, these mega databases where, where people could just take you know, 360 photographs and they could be archived, they could be dated. Um, and and you, know, you could pull out all sorts of you know, visualization changes in habitat, changes in, in landscape, and so on. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm just thinking aloud. Yeah, it's it's really it's really amazing what um, technology continues to um, you know how it continues to develop and how it can be valuable for various things, including you know what we are talking about now. Um, I think it's also really, it's common knowledge already here how much the introduction of the bird laser app itself was, you know, for the taking up of um, atlasing in Nigeria. Because when it started and we had to use lists and people going to the website to upload some of those, um, you know, it was really slow until the bird laser um, was extended to uh, the coverage got across all of um, West Africa and we started using it in Nigeria as well. So technology is one of the very um, vital things. And of course, you, um, we are also finding them very useful with the WhatsApp and Facebook organizing people. I just saw recently also that the um, National Geographic Society, again, awesome. trying to leverage this um, development in technology. So there was a specific call out, you know, asking people to look for ways to um, continue to integrate, um, 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 I think, artificial intelligence and other um, uh, advances in technology for uh, biodiversity conservation. Uh, of course, um, 
I, 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 I would really um, be interested in seeing, you know, the sort of things that come up out of all of uh, this recent call. But it's, I think it's really valuable, you know, what um, technology to the table when we think about um, um, biodiversity conservation as well. Okay. Uh, thank you. Any other question? Yes. Okay. Uh, sir. Okay. Well, I, I was thinking, do you see me? I was thinking, David, how do we get in contact with these people? Um, Google and Facebook. I mean, I do what is, I mean, I would be happy to try to work with it, but we know that they are there, but how do we get <laughs> touch with them. The shortcut, mm. shortcut into them. I mean, who shall we, how do we approach them? <laughs> so, I mean, like, we all know that we think we are sitting on something really good, yeah. but how do we give that to other people and how do we share it in a way that, that they take it up? Um, that, that, for me, that's a question and, and uh, something I actually thinking about more or less every day, not to full days, but every day, something. I mean, I, we have just uh, sent in a proposal to, to G-Beef and I'm working, we have worked with other funds and we have plans. Um, as you all know, we, we, the, and the main reason is to, to get the, the database uh, uh, fluent, I mean, uh, flying, still flying, because uh, Fits has, a, has its problem with financing, and and so everything. I mean, I, we we there are groups for for there are we are like a group now for African bird atlas working with this, I and mean, we would be more than happy to ever join and help with this and give suggestions to me or Colin or Les or Peter, Ryan in South Africa or to Michael to and to find ways in and uh, I, I will start uh, tomorrow to to find if there's anyone and give examples but it it's it, it's I mean, <clears throat> it should be mind-blowing for many people that that Africa is coming so far and many countries in Africa have coming this far and even places like Nigeria and Kenya where you don't think that anything will happen and, and we are still mm. there. And there's many countries coming. We just, we have it introduced it in Sierra Leone to Liberia. We just this week or last week had a Zoom workshop with Ghana and we are, play, we are uh, planning for Cameroon and Ethiopia, that is, they are in uh, and Gambia. Uh, we are talking with people there and, and also talking to people in Rwanda. And Bird Lasso now is also in French. So we can go almost all, all the place. So let's talk about it and not now, but if anyone have idea, please let me know. I will, I will follow it up and, and try to work with it. Thank you. Okay. That's Thanks, a very Wolf. good uh, suggestion. Yeah. Go ahead, Les. I think you must go ahead, Rune. <laughs> <laughs>